Hello there everyone and welcome to a quick, hopefully, product review with UXW Bill. The nice folks at Testmen sent me their smart digital multimeter, model number TM510, a long time ago, and they'd probably like it if I got around to reviewing it at some point. This particular meter is another great candidate for a possible My First Multimeter product. You might remember I reviewed a Southwire meter quite some time ago that I felt also would have made a good choice for someone's first multimeter. Let's find out if this particular product does. It'll be interesting to see if I can get through this without tripping over my tongue or being ambushed by any of the multitudinous ideas that are floating through my mind at any given time. On the back side of the box we see that they offered this in different colors. I wouldn't have minded getting a pretty red or even a blue one, but the green one is what they sent me. They actually sent me two of these and in true UXW Bill spirit I can't actually find the second one. So what's in the box? Well there are the, there are the instructions that I just dropped on the floor. That's an effort to try and sabotage making this review in one clean take. Many of the individual scenes in my videos are made in one clean take, but usually not the entire video unless it's a fairly short one. The second thing that you get is a little pouch that contains not only the meter itself, but also a pack-in set of what might even be genuine Duracell or Duraleak, depending upon how you look at things, brand batteries. And then you get a set of inexpensive, but probably adequate for this application, test leads. It's nice to see that they are actually removable test leads, so if you wear them out or break them along the way, you can certainly replace them. So we'll go ahead and get this meter out of the packaging here, and I'll show you why after we take the little jacket off the outside. Some people call this a holster. We'll open up the battery compartment. And I'll go ahead and put the batteries in here. See if we can just do that on camera. There we go. Go ahead and slot those in there. Actually sounds like it powered on. At least I heard a beep. Here's the little screw that goes into the battery compartment. It's not a captive screw as you've just seen so there's a fairly decent chance you could probably lose it. So why would I call this a good candidate for my first multimeter? Two reasons. Number one, it doesn't have a current sensing connector, which while it is a limitation, also makes it considerably safer in the hands of a novice, someone who is unfamiliar with the proper use of a multimeter. Because if you try to make a measurement across a voltage source, when the probes on the meter are hooked up to a current measuring jack, in the worst case, with a cheap or poorly made meter, you're quite likely to end up giving yourself a nasty surprise. With a better quality meter, there may even be there may even still be a bit of a light show when you pop the fuse inside the meter. And doing something like that. Go ahead and open up these probes. Certainly not something you could do in stealth, as you heard the packaging was really quite noisy. They've got little caps in the end probably to keep the ends from going flat as the meter is transported around the world to you. But this is a fully auto-ranging multimeter. You can probably see right now that it is displaying the word auto within the best capabilities of its limited display. There's also a little arrow that's animating back and forth. It's going between voltage, AC, DC, ohms resistance, and continuity. So you don't get to choose the operating mode when you're making tests with this meter. It automatically decides for you. The only options that you get other than a power button are a hold mode, which also doubles as a non-contact voltage detection mode. So if you hold this near a source of AC voltage and press that button, it will actually beep at you if you are near to a live circuit. And you can see that the display changes to read NCV. There's also a display backlight which you access with a brief press and then on the back there's a handy little flashlight. Might be very handy. Now I'm not going to make any particular in-depth tests of this meter because honestly I don't believe this is something that you would ever want to use in a commercial or industrial environment. I simply don't think that the safety characteristics are up to the job. 
But let's find out if it works well for anything that you might be likely to encounter around your home. And to simulate things that you might encounter around your home and wish to test with a meter, we have this little box right here with a clear acrylic cover. Some of you are undoubtedly wondering what this is. If you're interested in knowing more about this item, this is called the DMM Check Plus R6. It's capable of making several different measurements and it allows you to assess the accuracy of your multimeter. AC and DC voltage, a small amount of current, and a number of different resistances round out the tests that you can make with this device. Now it's my understanding that later versions of that have been improved with capacitance and possibly even induction tests. This meter does have an automatic power off timer. You can defeat that by holding one of these buttons. I don't remember which one. While you turn the power on and when you have successfully done so this little clock symbol in the upper left hand corner of the display will disappear. I'm also pleased to report if memory serves this little Tessman branded meter leaves the backlight on until you turn it off. I cannot tell you what a great feature that is and how glad I am to see that someone actually got that right because you would not believe the number of multimeter manufacturers that put the backlight on a timer, even a long one. And that just doesn't work well for me. When I turn that backlight on, I want it to stay on until I turn it off. And so it's very nice to see that Tessman appears to have gotten that right. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a DC voltage measurement. We'll go ahead and put our positive probe on the positive stub coming out of the DMM check circuit board. And if I can quit shaking long enough to make a good connection, the meter reports 5.02 DC volts. That's certainly more than close enough to perfect for me, especially since I've owned this for a couple of years now, and it is undoubtedly no longer considered to be an exact calibration. Now we'll switch over to AC volts. I may have to make this switch twice because this is equipped with an option to output AC voltage at two different frequencies and one of those frequencies is 20 kilohertz which is undoubtedly far beyond the bandwidth of this particular multimeter. So we'll go ahead and see what we get. It must be at the lower frequency right now because it is reading 4.99 volts AC. Which brings me to another feature that is offered by the Testman meter. It is a true RMS meter. That means it will measure within its frequency limits, which I believe are up to about 5 kilohertz, a distorted AC waveform with greater accuracy than a meter that is only calibrated to respond correctly to AC signals that are true sine waves. We'll explore that more in, in more detail here in just a moment. For right now, let's go ahead and make the various resistance tests. We have 100K, 1K, 10K, and apparently I can't read that. That's 100 ohms. That's 1K, 10K, and that's 100K. So we'll start going through these in order here. These are very high precision resistors. There it reports 102. I would certainly consider that acceptable. We'll move up to 1K. Seems acceptable to me. 10K. Very close. And then finally 100K. So it's certainly capable of making any reasonable resistance measurement that you'd be likely to encounter around your home. There's also an audible continuity mode. A light comes on on the meter. You can see it glowing. You can also hear the tone. The continuity beeper is latched so it doesn't sound scratchy or distorted as you move the probes around, which again is a very nice touch to see. And as you've just seen, it is fully auto-ranging through and through. So true RMS, let's take a closer look at that. We'll bring in a power bank here that happens to have an inverter that is not capable of true sine wave output. This little lump that's sticking out the side of the inverter, if you're curious about this, look up line splitter using your favorite web search engine. This is basically a device that allows you to make easy current measurements with devices that plug into the wall. It has a standard 15 amp socket on the end and a similar plug on the other end. So we'll go ahead and plug that back in. You get times 1 and times 10 for low current measurements, greater accuracy with certain clamp meters, and then in this particular model's case you also get some convenient access holes that allow you to make a quick and easy voltage test. 
So we just turned our inverter on, and the first thing I'll do is I'll get a meter that is not capable of making true RMS measurements, and you will see how when it is confronted with this distorted AC waveform, it will not measure accurately. The voltage will actually read low. So we'll just plug those in there. We're getting a reading of about 87.2 volts. If you didn't know any better, you might think, oh, my inverter's broken. A lot of people do think that from videos that I've seen on YouTube. But let's go ahead and bring the testman back over and plug its probes in here somewhat carefully. It is reading 111.9 volts AC, which is certainly much closer to the truth. So it definitely appears to be a true RMS multimeter. All right, so the thing that you've all come here to find out, does this meter get my seal of approval? Yes, I think it does. As long as you're using it in an appropriate environment, I think it will do almost everything that you're likely to need around the house. Obviously, it doesn't have things like a frequency counter or a capacitor checker, but I can forgive it not having those, and you may very well find as you continue your journey of exploring and learning about multimeters, that you may want to buy another meter in the future. As you've just seen, I certainly have other meters around. In fact, I honestly have way too many meters around. But getting back to the point, I do think that this particular model from Testman could be a valuable tool to have around your home, and it certainly doesn't cost a lot of money. If you're interested in purchasing one, You'll find a link down in the video description. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I don't benefit from it in any way. It's just there as a courtesy to everyone who happens to be watching this video and thinks they might like to go ahead and purchase this meter. I guess there is one other feature we ought to test, even though I wasn't really planning on doing so. And that would be the non-contact voltage detection. I don't have a lot of utility for a feature like that, but we'll go ahead and turn it on. The display changes, and we'll bring it close here, and indeed, it is going crazy, because there is definitely line voltage available there. And you can see how it reads in different levels. When we're far away, there's three dashes and an L that appear, and the light is green. As we get closer, the beeping increases in frequency, and the display changes to indicate H or a presence of higher intensity voltage, I guess you could say. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. I would certainly be interested in hearing your constructive commentary, and I hope that you have found this video both of interesting and useful.